Welcome to another Natron video tutorial. In this video, I want to go over drawing objects uh, and creating backgrounds in Natron, so just rendering them without having to import them or read them from a file or a picture or a movie sequence. So what I'm talking about is, right now we have just this black, actually we have a nothing background. We're just, we're just viewing nothingness right now. But let's view, let's change our background to a certain color. To do that, let's create a constant. So we go to the image nodes, left click on constant, and now we have a constant, nothing changed. It doesn't look like it anyway, but we're actually viewing now a black color. And if we bring it all the way out, uh, bring this color bar up to 100%, we're seeing a white background. If we actually click on this color wheel, we can change the color to any color we want. So maybe we want like a nice blue color, hit OK. So now we have a blue background. It's not really an object, it's not a, a rectangle that we can actually change. Um, we're just looking at this blue color in the viewer. So if we want to see something else in here, let's go to the draw maybe, and let's draw an actual rectangle. So now we have a rectangle node, but we're not seeing it. So let's break that. Let's bring it over here to the rectangle. Now we're looking at a rectangle. At first glance, it might look like it's the same thing as a constant, but look at the options it has. It has a lot more options than just color. And we can see on here, we can actually click and move it around, whereas the constant is just a set, the whole screen, we can't really change. It's not really an object like this. It's not a rectangle we can move around and change the shape of. So we can change the color of this. We click over here in the white. We can make this like a green square. But we see, we're seeing a black background. We're not seeing this blue. And actually this background is just nothingness right now. What we need is a merge node. So let's actually go ahead and grab one of those. Let's go to the merge nodes, add in a merge node. So now we see A is this rectangle, which is what we want to be on top, and B is what we want to, to be our background. B is always the background. So now we're seeing our background is our constant color blue, and our rectangle is over top of this blue. That's pretty cool. Um, and then it's all going out to the viewer. Uh, maybe we want to read in some text. Let's go to, I mean, draw some text. We go to the draw node and we go to text and now we're drawing in text. But because we had this constant selected, Natron thinks we wanted to add it in between here and here. So it just threw it in there. So now we're seeing the text merged with the rectangle, but it's not really, it's not working properly. Let's delete that. We actually want to grab another merge node. So we're going to add in a merge below this merge. To do that, we just add another merge node, and now we're merging. And actually, we want the, this merge node to be the background, and then the foreground, we want the A to be tied to our text. So now let's draw in our text again, and now we have our text. If you skip some of the, the tutorials, if some of this is maybe moving too fast for you, you're having trouble getting these merge nodes and getting your viewer to display the correct objects that you want it to, you might need to go back and watch some of the more introductory videos of this tutorial series, because I'm kind of going over this a little more quickly than I did in some of those other ones. But now we're seeing three object, three different things. We have our constant, which is our blue background. We have our rectangle, which is right here that we can move around, and we have our text. So let's change the settings. Let's double click this text node, and let's call this text, we'll call it, hello world. So now our text here is saying hello world, and when we move it, it'll update to what it's saying. Um, and we can change like the scale of it, change the size of it over here. We can even like rotate it a little bit if we want to like, oops, that's the skew. Rotate's gonna be here. So we rotate it maybe like up like this, and it's just kind of saying hello world there. Deek. All right, cool. And then we have this square here. We'll put it down at the bottom. So we've got a, we've got a bunch of things going on here. Um, what else can we create though? This, this constant, this blue background is kind of boring. And if we hit D right now, we'll disable it and we'll see what it looks like without it. So that's hitting the D key on the keyboard to disable that. And I'm just going to actually hit the delete key and let's just delete it completely because let's draw in something else. Let's go to draw and let's do this noise. So what this is going to do when we tie it into the, we make it the background of our first merge node. Did you see what that did? It actually, it's kind of subtle, but it created this noise in here. And we can change the settings on it too to make it like more extreme. So we've got this noise. And if we hit our play, it's actually playing like old school 
<coughs> like noise interference. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we can actually play this and see what's happening. So it's like a little video. It's generating this rent, this noise. That's kind of cool, huh? Um, let's delete the noise though, and I'll show you something else you can render. Let's do this plasma. So plasma, we can put that into the the B, the background of our first merge node. And then we can see what that looks like. So we hit play, nothing happens. But that's because we're just looking at a constant. We have the static seed selected. If we select static seed, uncheck that, it's going to just change a, a random seed every frame. So now it's got this weird kind of effect going on with this plasma. And we can affect the look of this plasma too by making it uh, much more, uh, change the alpha on it, change some of these different settings, change the scale for how large the plasma is. Um, so yeah, that's plasma. Let's tr see what else we can draw here. Okay, let's draw a, let's draw a radial. So a radial, what's gonna happen if we tie this in to the, to the merge? So now we've got this radial, it's not, it's just gonna stay constant the whole time, it's not doing anything. But now we have this radial that's like starting at a white and it's fading out to a black. But we can change, instead of fading out to a black, we can fade out to like a red maybe. See how that looks? Oh, that didn't do it for us for some reason. Oh, so we need to turn it, we need to turn this part up. So we turn it to white first and then we change it, or we turn it to 100%. So now it's fading out, it was fading out, it wasn't actually fading out to black, it was fading out to alpha, fading out to invisibility. Um, so now we've got this, so we can kind of move around. So it's fading from red to white, or we can fade it into like something more, you know, like a teal green. <laughs> and then we can go to our text and change our text color down here instead of white. Let's make it like kind of blue, make it kind of pop a little bit. And this green triangle or rectangle, let's change it, change the color of it too. We'll change that to like something like red. Now we've got some craziness going on here, but still we're not animating anything because I'm just showing you um, sort of rendering some of these things. Let's try, let's get rid of the radial now and let's do instead, let's do a um, ramp. Mm -hmm. So what ramp's gonna do, let's tie it in. So it's gonna do the same thing as the radial, except now it's fading, instead of fading from the center out to the edges, it's gonna fade according to these lines here. So point one to point two is fading white to black. We can make this fade more dramatic or we can make it, um, you know, angle it this way if we want. So it kind of fades over here. Uh, and then we can also, of course, change the colors of the fade. So instead of white, we can, we can make this fade be like a salmon color or a purple color. So, all right, let's get rid of this ramp. And let's change to this uh, Rand. So what's Rand gonna do? And you, as you see, we're just kind of like playing with this. So Rand looks sort of like that distortion and it's playing too. It's just randomly, it's just creating some randomness, some random noise. So noise is at 100%, density is at 100%. Um, and so it's just random, very similar to noise. And that's what the Rand is doing for our background and it is animated. So when you render things like this, go ahead and just like play. Play with all these. So we're, we've actually gone through most of them. Roto, we're gonna do in another video. Roto is so you can actually draw your own mask, uh, draw a mask, or you can trace things. Roto's for sort of like drawing we'll, and Roto paint. We'll cover those later, uh, cover those later. SE grain, I'm actually not sure what this one does. Let's see here. So I don't know what that one does. I'll have to learn that and teach it to you later. But uh, those are some of the different things. And then do we do all these? You can do like a, we can generate a color bar and then we can drag it. So that's just showing like all these different bars of colors uh, in here. And it doesn't have a whole lot of different settings. You've got bar intensity, like this brightness of it. I think that, I thought there was size too. Maybe there's not a scale on that one. And then um, what else do we have under the, under here? We've got, we did constant. Did we do color wheel? Oh, we got checkerboard. Checkerboard's kind of cool. So checkerboard, a lot of times you'll see like a checkerboard like this um, indicating that it's like a transparent background, but we can change like the size of the boxes on the checkerboard. We can change the color of each individual box of the checkerboard. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's rendering out. We're gonna, I'm gonna do another video where I talk about the uh, shader toy. 
but shader tour is really cool too but shader tour you can actually render in um, so shader tour is like moving too but it's a moving background so you see these colors are changing and with shader toy you actually go into it and you um, well we'll do it in, an, in a in another video but you can change like some of the settings of the shader toy uh, to be different things besides just like colors like this so maybe in, in fact the next video we'll, we'll play with shader toy so check that one out um, yeah but that's just some of the ways that you can do, render some things that you can use in uh, Natron and play with that get familiar with it and it's going to make you better and be able to create some better projects in Natron thanks for watching